So about a couple of years ago, I did this video. It was talking about my top five Judas Priest albums. And I listened to them all. I think like I had Painkiller. You can see that right back there. And that was my number one. But I got a lot of comments uh, saying that uh, I should have included Stained Glass. I don't know why this uh, album never really like connected with me as much as uh, other people have. I know this is a, a fan favorite. Over time, I have been listening to it a lot more, and I think it's really a great album. It has lots uh, to talk about. So um, that's what we're going to talk about today. And also, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about um, a lawsuit that was sparked because of uh, this album, and particularly one song. This past Tuesday in Reno, Nevada District Court, Rob Halford repeatedly denied the previous week's findings of a so-called audio expert. Let's uh, talk about that. So the album is Stained Glass. Came out on February 10th, 1978, and is celebrating a 45th anniversary. This also came out the same day as uh, Van Halen's debut album. So on this particular day, two great albums that were just very influential in the world of heavy metal were released. So that's pretty cool. Released on Columbia Records and... Really great uh, lineup. We have uh, Rob Halford, uh, KK Downing, and Glenn Tinton. Then we have uh, Ian Hill on bass and Les Binks on drums. This was an album where all five members have uh, songwriting credits. I think it might be the first time that ever happened. Now let's look at the uh, album cover. Pretty cool. You know, it has like that, that like dark, that like figure, that figure of the head on the album cover. And this is the first album cover with the classic logo. That's pretty cool. You know, they, they use that logo. And the one you see here in my shirt here. This album was produced by uh, Dennis McKay. Kind of an interesting choice of a producer because he also produced other bands like David Bowie and Supertramp. Which were not metal bands, but also keep in mind that metal didn't really exist outside of Black Sabbath. At this time in 1978, you know, I think... 1978 was kind of like the birth of heavy metal, you know, with this album and the Van Halen album. I mean, it was born with Black Sabbath, but these two albums took it to another level. So this was also recorded in uh, October of uh, 1977 in Oxfordshire in London. So let's talk about um, the lawsuit. So this took place in, uh, the lawsuit took place in 1990. Um, it was about uh, two, um, I guess you can call them young adults or older teenagers. Uh, James Vance, he was 20 years old, and Raymond Belknap was 18 years old, and they uh, decided to take their own lives. They made a pact with each other. Now, why they did that, uh, we don't really know, but it was speculated that it was because they had previously listened to this album, Stained Glass, and they thought, there were subliminal messages that their parents did. So this took place on December 23rd, 1985. Uh, you know, they were drinking a lot of alcohol. They were smoking a lot of weed. They went out to like this field with a shotgun and, you know, they took their own lives uh, one after the other. I know one of them died immediately and the other one was in the hospital for a long time, but eventually would die, I think, years later of, for a drug overdose. So these guys also had lots of substance abuse problems. So there was a court case. So allegedly there were subliminal messages in, in the song called Better By You, Better By Me, which is kind of a weird choice saying that, that song because it's a cover song originally by uh, Spooky Tooth, uh, a song from 1969, and a song that I think the, the band, like, did at last minute, I think the record company wanted something a little catchier, but that was a song that allegedly had this subliminal messages which said do it. But there was a court case. Court case was eventually dismissed by the judge because they couldn't prove anything. And there was a time when heavy metal was this like big and evil thing. And it was kind of started a whole like satanic panic. I was also talking about in my last Van Halen video. How uh, the, the song Running With The Devil, you know, got a lot of flack from you know, these Christian groups uh, thinking it was satanic, but we all know that's not true. And we all know that this album doesn't have any subliminal messages. It, it just was ruled out. And also, uh, Rob ha Halford commented later that, you know, like, why would we want to put subliminal messages in our albums? It's very counterproductive to 
kill off our fans. Like it doesn't make any sense. So that was the reasoning behind that. So let's uh, talk about the songs. This one opens with uh, Exciter, and this is usually uh, brought into the discussion when we talk about the first thrash metal songs. So when we say like songs that were, like we usually consider uh, Metallica's Kill Em All as the first thrash metal album, and we always talk about what were some of the songs that were came before that. So in the conversation, we, we would talk about Exciter, we talk about Accepts Fast as a Shark, there's a Black Sabbath, a Symptom of the Universe, and there might have been a couple more. But this is just a great um, song. I really like the harmonized twin guitars. And this was a single with a dissident aggressor on the B-side. Um, next, White Heat, Red Hot. This is just a classic heavy metal uh, written by Glenn Titin. Titin. The lyrics about like fire and death. You get those harmonized guitars. This is something we hear a lot in this album and just classic guitar solos. And then the song I was talking about, Better By You, Better By Me, which is a cover song. But the song itself is very good. It's just more of a classic rock song. It's catchier, some cool drum rolls. So I like that one a lot. Then uh, the title track called Stained Glass. Um, what I like about this is that gallop, just as a, a perfect example of that, like galloping guitar. Something that will be used in heavy metal like all throughout the 80s and you know up until today. That's like that like Iron Maiden gallop that I was like used to talk about, but this is a, a pre-Maiden song, so I like that a lot. Also, uh, this uh, song Stained Glass gets a little darker. They kind of do some like darker Black Sabbath-y kind of stuff, so I like that one a lot. And then the song Invader. This one's pretty cool because it kind of goes a little back to their early 70s stuff. I'm talking like rock and roller with like some like psychedelic and you know influences. More of a straightforward rock song has the tempo changes. I, I always felt this was a little more like a prog rock song. This one reminded me a little more of that early times, and uh, this one also reminds me of Iron Maiden. I don't know why. It might be just because um, Maiden has a song called Invaders from Number of Beasts, but that's why it reminded me of that. Now in Saint Two, uh, a song called Saints in Hell. Now. If there was one song going to be controversial, I would think it would have been this one, but it's a really good song. Hard rock, a cool breakdown, more like elements of space rock. Uh, you know, Rob Halford has a pretty cool echo effect in the vocals. I like that one a lot. And then Savage, just classic Judas Priest. Uh, another one with that mid-paced song, that 70s rock feel, that gallop. This is a song that uh, sounds like something like from the, uh, the, the Rad Wing, Sad Wings of Death. He almost said that. Uh, Ugly Kid Joe uh, album title but Sad Wings of Destiny reminds me of that one and uh, now possibly one of the first power ballads ever Beyond the Realms of Death many years ago I had this cassette tape which was this compilation and I looked for it online I couldn't find it I forgot the name of it but it had this song on it it had uh, Twisted Sister the Price it had Ace Frehley's Rock Soldiers one of them I used to listen to all the time but Beyond the Realms of Death this is the classic power ballad with the light verse and the heavy chorus. First solo was by Glenn Titton. Second solo was by K.K. Downing. It's just one of those songs. It just has that formula that was used uh, so many times afterwards. It's about a man suffering from depression and how people from depression withdraw from society. And one more song called Hero's End. This one reminded me of like 70s Scorpions. and It's a really memorable guitar riff. Rob Halford lets out these high pitched vocals. It's catchy. This has that like a uh, sing alongable type of chorus and uh, really good. They, they do some isolated vocals and then these guitar sounds, just classic like heavy metal sounds with like these classic whales, I call them. Just really great. So that's what I'm going to talk about this album. Uh, let me know in the comments what do you think of uh, Stained Glass. I know this is a fan favorite. People put it in their top five. So um, we can talk about it in the comments, and um, that is all. Weekend's coming up, uh, new albums. Uh, I think we have In Flames, Paramore. Those are the ones that come to mind. So thanks for the three uh, anniversary reviews, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.